Chapter 44 Queen for a Day One morning, a strange ringing sound woke me up from my well-earned and much-needed sleep. I hopped out of bed, bounded down the stairs, and marched into my mother's room, where I found her sitting up in bed, striking the perfect Queen Elizabeth pose. A tiny brass bell dangled between her regal fingertips. I stared at her in disbelief. Please tell me you didn't ring that to summon me. I most certainly did. And now I will take that lovely little bell from you and officially retire it, so it never rings again. For heaven's sake, why? Because you are not the queen, and I am not your servant. You are my mother, I am your son, who is here out of love, not duty. She reluctantly handed me the bell. So, your majesty, what do you desire on this bright musical morning? I'd like some tea. Please, I coached her. Please. Would you like that now, or shall we wait until you ascend the throne? Gesturing to the commode. Now, please, as you wish. Mom enjoyed playing the queen, if only for that one day. She always loved being pampered at the beauty parlor, and now by me. She bathed in it, but at times she overdid the royalty bit. God forbid she found her Bijan Frise blanket or her grandson Josh's photo a tiny bit out of place. Her regal lips remained silent while her imperial finger did the talking, commanding up an eighth inch here, down a quarter inch there, and so on, until perfection ruled. This exercise in patience got old fast. It was enough to pray for blindness. In contrast, Dad always felt guilty about bothering anyone, and he did so only when it was absolutely necessary, and he often apologized after. During his final days, he never cried out for help or rang an annoying brass bell. Instead, he put what he needed to song and hoped for the best. His delightful ditty went something like this. I'm just lying here in my bed, waiting for someone to come along to help me to the toilet, cause I can't get up on my own. So I'll keep singing this song until someone comes along so I can do my business in the proper place. The first time I heard him singing, I selfishly listened for way too long before coming to his aid. It was so damn entertaining, I didn't want it to end. Though Mom lacked royal blood, she did possess many royal qualities. She kept her emotions from the public eye, remained stoic when facing adversity, and never complained of pain. She didn't swear, a fact we all took pride in, and one trait I had yet to master. One frustrating day, I let loose with a few choice words. Knowing how much cursing upset her, I said, Sorry, Mom. It's hard being a parent. I guess, but I never swore. So true, even when she had good reason to. One time, when Mom was shuttling my high school friends home, a car had cut her off. Fudgy wudgy, she muttered. My friends snickered in the back seat, thinking she kept it clean for them. That wasn't for your benefit, I explained. That's as bad as it gets. Neither of my parents swore. When Mom got mad, she'd say, nincompoop, I'm fed up, or if absolutely furious, I'm so angry I could spit. When Dad got angry, it seemed like food came to mind. He said things like, chowderhead, you're full of soup, get the ham out of here. In the company of the Christians in my family, I worked hard to curtail my cursing. One night, while dashing through the snow to catch Christmas service, my young, impressionable nephews and I lagged way behind their mother, a former track star. Frustrated by how fast she was and how fast we weren't, I started to say my favorite swear word. But, for my nephew's benefit, I finished with followers. We're mother followers. Saved. I got away with it because that was what we were at that moment. Mother followers. 
My queen mother's other royal qualities included being faithful to her husband and equally devoted to her children, whether or not she remembered their names. She once hired a maid to keep her palace clean, but that maid had done little of that and disappeared after a few weeks. I believe she ran off with some of the crown jewels. Yet Mom refused to speak ill of her. Our queen also took to her grave, no matter how many times I asked, which cousin stole your father's prized gun collection? Even though I retired the queen's tiny brass bell that day, my mother still reigned over this castle, and I, her humble servant, on most occasions, sucked it up and did what I could to fulfill all of Her Majesty's wishes. I also prayed that all of my future foul language fell on deaf ears. Thank you.